Okay, uh, hello everyone. My name is Anita Zhang. I'm a software engineer at Facebook. And technically, I'm on the containers team, but my primary work revolves around supporting systemd at Facebook. Uh, today, I'll be talking about how Facebook simplified and adapted umd, our user space out of memory killer, into a new daemon that's now part of the systemd project, systemd umd. My presentation is not very long, so I prefer to get through the slides first and address any questions at the end. Uh, there will be slide numbers on every slide, um, and you can also just drop stuff in the chat and I'll see it afterwards. Okay, here's the agenda for this talk. I'll briefly go over what is UMD and talk a bit about the background around the original UMD daemon from Facebook. Then I'll discuss what changes we made to adapt it for the systemd project in order to get systemd umd. I'll follow that up with the current Fedora settings and how adoption has resulted in improvements for systemd umd. And finally, I'll talk about future plans before opening the floor for a discussion. So an overview of umd. I'd like to reiterate that this is the uh, original Facebook UMD and not yet the one um, that's part of the systemd project that I'll discuss in the next section. So my slides should be available for download if you'd like to check out the links later. Um, here I've included a link to the original UMD that Facebook open sourced on GitHub, as well as a link to Daniel Shu's 2019 LPC talk on UMD. If you're interested in more of the details around why Facebook developed UMD and how it works. Um, but to summarize, UMD operates in user space, and one of its goals is to free up resources before the kernel UM killer kicks in. We want this because the kernel can spend an unbounded amount of time swapping pages and evicting the page cache when it does an UM kill. Some other advantages over the kernel UM killer include a more flexible configuration, which results in more deterministic kills. And I'll talk about uh, that more in later slides. The kernel operates on per process um related numbers, which are not the most intuitive from a user's perspective to configure. Um, and kernel based um kills don't always translate to making user space healthy because the kernel um killer exists to protect the kernel health. As for the technologies driving umd, it operates only on C group 2, and one of the big things it uses is pressure stall information or PSI to make um killing decisions. I mentioned that the kernel um killer operates at a process level, and so its configuration is process-based, but umd only operates at the C groups level. Umd's C group centric model was chosen due to the advantages with resource control. With C group two, you can group processes together and set various resource limits on them, as well as get accounting metrics. And as part of these metrics, you also get PSI for each C group. Usually when I mention a pressure threshold or pressure limit in this talk, I'm referring to memory pressure from a C group's uh, PSI file. The PSI metrics show what percentage of tasks in the C group were delayed due to lack of resources. So for UMD, the threshold or limit values correspond to what percentage of tasks in the C group couldn't make progress due to lack of memory. I'm glossing over a lot of the detail for the purposes of this talk, but I've linked to one of the Facebook microsites, which explains this better. Here's a snippet of what an UMD configuration looks like. Um, it's written in JSON, and you can tell it things like what plugin to use, which C groups to monitor, and what thresholds to act on. And the continuation of that is what the action format looks like. In other words, what plugin to use, when a kill needs to happen, and which C groups to operate on. Um, so integrating this into systemd. Why systemd umd? In some ways, it's something that was naturally going to happen due to the fact that umd is tightly coupled with systemd. A lot of our current configuration relies on systemd C group setup and how it organizes um, the C group's hierarchy. And UMD relies on systemd C group knobs to set up things like the memory controller. 
Um, besides that, systemd as a user space component is well positioned to interface between the kernel and applications. And the systemd project is generally receptive to making novel use of resource control. Um, but at the end of the day, we want to make it easier for people to adopt user space OOM killing, and shipping OOMD and systemd is one of the best ways to do so. Uh, systemd is widely adopted, so it would make OOMD available without any additional installation or dependency burdens. And by conforming to systemd's syntax format, it makes it easier on users to configure limits for themselves. As part of the integration with systemd, we had to rewrite OOMD in C because systemd's daemons and the project are primarily written in C, while OOMD is C++. And then the other hurdle we had to deal with was the interface. Um, stylistically, systemd's configuration is very limited as it uses INI style syntax, so plain text sections of key and value strings. JSON that you saw in the OOMD configuration is not acceptable. And the idea of having arbitrary plugins was also discouraged during initial discussions with the systemd maintainers. Um, since not everyone has a resource control team like Facebook to tune OOMD, we wanted to make it as easy as possible to adopt user space OOM killing by removing some of the complexity around um, picking parameters for OOMD, but also balancing it with an interface that could become too inflexible to be useful. Since Facebook had been running OOMD in production for some years now, uh, we narrowed down the initial version of systemd OOMD to two core stable features, memory pressure-based kills and swap-based kills. For memory pressure, systemd OOMD watches for pressure that exceeds a supply threshold and kills a C group based on the page scan rate. We've had different OOM kill decisions and plugins for pressure-based killing in the past, However, page scan from a cgroup's memory.stat file best reflected which cgroup is the largest consumer while taking into account any memory protections that are in place. Uh, swap-based killing is the most straightforward, I think. If swap used goes above a supply threshold, then systemd umd picks the cgroup to kill based on swap usage uh, from memory.swap.current. In Facebook production, we tend to over-provision swap. And so if swap gets depleted, it's a good indicator that there's a memory leak or other anomaly. Here's an example of what the daemon configuration looks like for systemd umd. This exists primarily to set up system-wide defaults, such as the swap use limit and what defaults to use for memory pressure-based killing if they're not set in the unit configuration. The unit configuration is where you actually decide which C groups to monitor and kill. And for the like, rest of this talk, I'll likely be using unit and C group interchangeably since every unit in systemd has a corresponding C group. And here's an example of what a unit file looks like to enable killing with systemd umd. Um, by default, managed um swap and managed um memory pressure are set to auto, which means this C group um, on the slide, verb.slice, won't be monitored for swap or memory pressure based killing. Only when these things are set to kill will systemd umd monitor and kill things. There also exists a managed OOM preference, which can be set to tell systemd OOMD to deprioritize or ignore the C group if it's included as a candidate during kill selection. Uh, more on kill selection in the next slide. Um, don't worry about reading the super tiny text. I'll explain it in a bit. Um, you might have noticed that another big difference between OOMD's JSON configuration and systemd umd's unit-based configuration is that you no longer explicitly state which C groups to monitor or kill. Umd's configuration allows you to do something quite interesting, which is monitor one C group, but kill a C group in an unrelated subtree. Uh, normally, no one does that, but it's an interesting quirk. Systemd umd's configuration does not allow you to do this. Monitoring in systemd umd is tied to the managed um settings in the unit. And so killing is tied to all the leaf C group nodes under that monitor unit. 
So in the example um, on this slide, the dark orange boxes, alpha.slice, bravo.service, and charlie.scope all have managed to memory pressure set to kill. Uh, that's what's written in the small text. So systemd umd will monitor these C groups and kill things under them if they exceed their set pressure limits. I've circled the possible kill candidates on the slide. So from left to right, C group foxtrot is bravo.service's only leaf node. So if bravo.service exceeds its threshold, that's the only C group systemd umd would kill. Um, charlie.scope has no children C groups. So nothing would be killed if charlie.scope exceeded its thresholds. That's one quirk about this setup. You wouldn't want to set something like managed to memory pressure kill on a unit that doesn't actually have sub C groups below it. Um, alpha dot slice has two leaf C group nodes. However, in the small print inside echo dot slice, I wrote that um policy is set to kill. This is a systemd property that sets the C group file memory.um.cgroup to one and tells the kernel um killer to kill the whole C group if it kills a process inside it. Um, systemd umd does something kind of similar when it sees this. Instead of going all the way to the leaf node, systemd umd will stop at echo.slice and potentially kill it and all C groups below it. In this case, um, echo.slice and golf.service. Uh, Um, so outcomes from starting in um, Fedora 34, uh, systemd umd became the default user space um killer. And as a starting point, we had to ship a default policy for Fedora and settled on watching for memory pressure on the user manager C group going above 50% for 20 seconds and watching for swap use limit on the system going over 90%. Um, this would cover all things started by the user with swap covering the rest of the system. One of the big concerns around shipping systemd umd by default was around systems that don't support and organize user C group two hierarchy. For example, GNOME is nice as it splits all these start applications into their own user services. If you don't do that, you could end up in a situation where a bunch of processes are under the same C group, and systemd umd could wipe out too many things at once. We left it up to the individual Fedora spins in that case to opt out of systemd umd if they wanted to. Um, but since systemd umd is a systemd service, um, people could also just stop and mask the unit themselves if they wanted to opt out. Um, so um killing is one of those things where people don't really say anything unless it's broken. And then even if it's working correctly, uh, people might bring something up anyways. But we did address several things along the way. Um, for example, the policy that we ended up shipping generally works well, um, but it didn't always go this way the first time. Uh, initially, we had something much lower, like a 5 or 10% pressure limit on the user manager. This worked OK on systems with SSDs and swap on ZRAM, but it proved to be much too low overall. So hence, we bumped that up to 50%. Some other things that changed along the way, swap kills initially ignored um, how much memory was available and just focused on how much swap was available and whether there were large consumers of swap. Uh, this worked fine in our production fleet due to the over-provisioned swap. But for Fedora users, um, this kind of produced mixed results. I think due to using swap on ZRAM by default and having less swap overall, um, this tended to keep more things in swap even when memory was free. So that behavior has been updated now um, so that we only kill when both memory and swap usage are high. Um, and then there's an issue with uh, high CPU usage. Systemd umd runs with a timed loop, and initially it would read memory.stat um, from a C group every iteration for every leaf node that was a possible candidate. Um, and it was doing this to record the page scan values. However, reading uh, memory.stat across that many C groups ended up using like 3% of CPU. Um, so that behavior has been updated now as well to only read memory.stat for the moderate C groups and to 
get the information for the rest of the kill candidates when the pressure limit is hit. Future plans. Um, so this slide's pretty short, but likely more features will be coming to Systemd UMD and Systemd as well um, as we continue to migrate more of our hosts from UMD to Systemd UMD. Um, but one of the primary limitations for desktops is that the initial implementation of Systemd UMD only applies to system units. That is, any user units with managed UM settings are ignored by Systemd UMD. This generally worked fine um, for server workloads, but it's not ideal for desktops. I think ideally we could set different limits on a user's um, app.slice, which runs most applications, um, compared to like session.slice, which holds more of the critical user services. I've linked a PR um, that is now merged um, in order to support this. Another thing is silent kills. Um, generally, when an OOM kill happens, either in the kernel or systemd OOMD, you uh, don't really get a lot of notice about it. <laughs> um, the application just kind of disappears. Um, so you go into your logs, and you'll get the log line about what killed it, and maybe you'll make some sense about it. Um, but it would be nice to get more visible feedback about uh, why an application was killed or when it gets killed maybe a pop-up or um, a desktop notification. And we have an issue open right now um, discussing this kind of thing as well. OK, um, thanks for listening. I've had a lot of support in getting Systemd UMD to where it is now. And of course, this list of people is non-exhaustive. Um, but now I'll take questions and uh, open the floor for discussion. Thank you, Anita. You can see the chat, can't you? So I think there are some questions there. Do, do people want to turn the microphone on and, and ask? I, I can start. I have just really two very short questions. And I've already, sorry, I already pasted them in the chat. Um, thanks for the talk. That was really interesting. I hadn't followed the OMD development recently. Um, it, this is single threaded and standalone. So it's, I guess, a separate binary in the systemd tool suite, right? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. And this uh, second one is whether this is already or is going to make use of cgroup.kill when it kills cgroups. Like how? This oh, is a new uh, feature that is upcoming in, in, in cgroup v2 where you can directly kill a cgroup by writing into a single file essentially instead of, I guess, what you're doing right now is iterating through the cgroup and killing it every individual task. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I think we actually switched some of the systemd code to use cgroup.kill. Um, so systemd umd uses like, you know, the same library systemd does. So I think if we switched over what I think is the cgroup recursive killing function to cgroup.kill, uh, systemd um, umd would have picked up that change already, um, cool. possibly by the next version, but I need to double check. Um, and actually, I should correct my statement about it being standalone because there is. Uh, somewhat of a hard dependency on systemd in that, uh, you know, we have to send the unit information over from systemd to systemd umd. Um, oh, okay, so you, need, you essentially need dbus calls, right? Uh, it's it's actually using the var link. Um, ah, yeah, now. right. That's the but, yeah. I okay, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um. Would anyone else in chat like to ask their question? Um, I can also read it uh, live. Let, let me uh, ask, uh, I, I think I'll already ask. So one thing is the like cgroup v2 dependency. I think uh, it might be more uh, on the PSS side. But what else do you need, uh, the, the only needs from the cgroup v2? Why there is a hard uh, dependency on this v2? Um. I mean, Facebook kind of is like all in on C groups too. Um, so most of our fleet at this point is not running C groups one at all. So it wasn't prioritized. Um, but I think PSI is C groups two only. Um, I need to check that statement. So there is anything else in the V2 which is required for uh, OMD? 
not required per se, but just the layout of the C groups two hierarchy is a lot easier to um, process, I guess. It makes the code a lot simpler as well. Okay. So no, no, nothing hard required um, as far as I know. Um, Tom uh, Ramatka asked, um, does this mean standalone UMD is now deprecated and no longer being maintained? Um, so we are still maintaining UMD at this point. Um, I think we do want to head in a direction where um, the main killing portions will be in systemd umd um, because uh, despite the name umd actually does things besides kill c groups um, we use it internally for um, some monitoring things um, and i believe senpai is in a separate repo in github but uh, we use that internally with umd so not deprecated um, yet or at least not, you know, for a while. So, um, uh, I, I have one uh, question more, uh, not uh, just on the, like, uh, on the systemd part, but more on the omd part. So currently, omd, uh, I, I am assuming it uh, does mainly, like, how uh, the memory and the CPU guarantees are provided to the omd when the system is under memory pressure. Uh, I, I can understand the CPU with the high uh, scheduling priority and the memory, the m -log and stuff. One specific uh, question, um, uh, if you know, is uh, more for the allocations on the syscalls and stuff. Uh, like uh, whenever uh, it has to read files, it has to read the stats and stuff. There are allocations there. It has to do, send the signals. So for in, in your production, have you seen uh, OMD getting stuck in the reclaim? Um, so we have, uh, I believe it's memory.low set on OMD. So at least from a memory side, it should always be guaranteed some amount of memory. Um, but I don't know uh, specifics about when OMD would get stuck. Um, Actually, I've left my email on these slides. If you'd like to me to follow up on a question, um, you can also send me an email about it, and I can get back to you. Um, let's see. Uh, Jordan Ogla asked, is there any graphical indication for desktop users that an OOM kill has happened? Um, so I addressed that in the future plans. Uh, and kind of in the another slide, but not right now. Um, I think we may get something in GNOME in the future. Um, that's what this, uh, there's some discussion on this link here about that. But no, right now there's no um, graphical indication. Um, would anyone? Oh, hi. Oh, um, sorry, Vlast Timil, I think you're muted, um, or at least I can't hear you. I mean, you were unmuted before, but I couldn't hear you. I don't know why. Maybe it's me. No, I cannot hear either, even when you are. Not muted. The mute icon goes away, but there's still no noise. Oh, I, I can hear you now. That's me. Y yes. Um, there's a question from Mikhail about slide 14. Oops. 
Uh, let's see. Does systemd umd distinguish sub C groups below dot service level, or does it take dot service as an atomic um, entity? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, it, so in this example, um, every sub C group, even if it's created by systemd or not, um, it would be considered its own. Uh, like a separate C group leaf node um, is is that what you're asking? Um, it's not, uh, you know, it doesn't look at just Bravo dot service by itself unless it's for monitoring purposes. For killing, it goes um, just below. If if there are more uh, C groups here, it would traverse each one to the leaf. Can you hear me now? Yes. OK, thanks. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know what, what I just reconnected and it works. Uh, I had a question. Uh, it, there was a slide about the simplification for system D, and there was that uh, the memory pressure was based on PG scan rate. Does it mean that? You no longer use the PSI in the, in the system D O M D version. Um, so PSI is used for the monitoring part. So we use PSI to watch when the uh, pressure thresholds change. Um, and, but when we kill, we sort by PG scan rate, and then we pick what to kill based on that. Oh, so it's just for sorting. Okay. And thanks. And my other question. So it was always one of the issues with Linux desktops or laptops that that they would, uh, when the memory got exhausted, they would start trashing, and and the kernel OM wouldn't kick soon enough, and people would just reboot. So. Do you think that uh, the system, the OMD, solved this uh, for once and all? And um, I, I don't want to make any claims about like for <laughs> once and for all, uh, but the specific um, situation you're talking about, um, UMD and system D UMD um, both resolve live locks. Um, maybe not as quickly as you'd like it to, you can address, you can um, adjust the time threshold for that. Uh, but yes, it does um, fix these system life locks. And there are no do downsides, like in some situations it would kill too soon once you tuned the thresholds. Uh, yeah, so threshold tuning is it's still, it's just like one percentage. Um, I mean, I think it does change a bit between what your hardware situation and swap setup is like on your system. Um, but I mean, once you configure it, it's it's just all based on what's coming in through the PSI. It won't kill like more or less than what the PSI says. OK, thank you. So uh, one question I have is, uh, is the action, like UMD currently, uh, the, the action it does is killing, right? Uh, I, I'm wondering if uh, you have, or uh, Facebook has looked more into the other potential uh, action, for example, throttling or freezing, uh, like when there is memory pressure, maybe it makes sense instead of killing low priority, low priority, long running jobs, so that uh, like, so they don't lose their work by killing them, instead throttle them or freeze them. Uh, have you looked in that direction? Um, so not exactly that direction. Um, maybe something similar. We're considering like uh, pre-kill hooks. Um, I believe UMD does something like that already, or at least the, the one we're using internally. Um, Systemd umd does not support pre-kill hooks yet, but I'd assume you'd be able to like um, you know 
do notifications or maybe like debus notifications or send different signals or something before the sig kill happens. So mainly the application has to uh, add the support to react on those notifications. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see, going back to Mikel's question. So he asked if Foxtrot had a sibling, sibling, um, would systemd umd treat them separately? Um, so the nice thing about uh, C group two um, and the systemd hierarchy is that you can only have processes in the leaf node. So yes, yeah, systemd umd would traverse um, the C groups down, um, but it would only kill the leaf process um, if it had one, which has the processes. Um, and then systemd itself would probably clean up the remaining C groups since they're empty. Um, but in terms of actually setting like managed U memory pressure on Foxtrot, which is a uh, you know service created C group and not a system D created C group, system D UMD does not respect that at the moment. Um, are there any other questions? I'm glad there's uh, a bit of discussion going on about V1 and V2 in the chat. Thank you very much, Anita. Um, yeah, trying to draw the line between when does the official presentation and the questions end and when has it sort of degenerate well is the de degenerated the right word when has it moved into um the follow-on discussions um so i think i'll call it there thank you ever so much for presenting it's been really interesting um no and uh, the chat chat will continue thank you yeah. thanks for listening everyone <laughs>